Every person living or working in an indoor space must feel comfortable. A comfort status means the absence of any psychological or somatic stress. Several spheres of interactions between the human body and the environment are engaged, so we can talk at least of four dimensions of comfort. Thermal, air quality, visual and acoustic. If we exclude the latter one, which is not an object of the present lecture, the other three comfort tasks can be managed through two main categories of design strategies, passive and active. Passive strategies basically deal with building design variables that have an influence on the natural interactions between the building and the surrounding environment. Architects and engineers can handle them through the choice of materials, their thickness and mass, the shape and orientation of the building, the size of the openings, the positioning of solar shading, and so on. Active strategies require a technological system which can be activated by the user or automatically by a control system. It converts primary energy in heat, cold, or light to support the passive behavior of the building and definitely achieve the task of comfort. For example, an active heating system will provide heat to counterbalance heat dispersions, or an artificial light system will provide additional light flux to integrate the scarceness of natural lighting. The first typology of active systems that we are going to discuss is the one referred to as HVAC systems. HVAC stands for heating and cooling, ventilation and air conditioning. Let's start making a classification based on their tasks. Heating and cooling systems are voted to control the temperature of the indoor space. Ventilation systems pursue the goal of ensuring good air quality. Air conditioning systems usually achieve these goals of heating, cooling and ventilation and additionally control the humidity, which is a fundamental parameter to ensure thermohygrometric comfort. An HVAC system can be local or centralized. In the first case, it is a small equipment, easy to install and generally operates autonomously, able to manage heat and mass transfer between the indoor space and outdoor. Centralized systems serve an apartment or a whole building and are made by four subsystems related to their following functions. Heat or cold generation, control and regulation, heat, cold and air distribution, heat, cold and air emission, which is delivery to the indoor ambient or rooms. Different configurations are available according to the fluid that carries the heat around the building. In civil application, we can have water, air, or refrigerants. Water and refrigerants are distributed through pipes, while air is distributed through ducts. According to the heat carrier and the way it is distributed to the rooms, we can further make a classification. All water systems, which can be two or four pipes. All air systems, which can be of several typologies according to the combination of the following variables, single duct, dual duct, constant flow, variable flow, single zone, multi-zone, local or centralized reheat. Air water system having at the same time a pipe network as well as air ducts. Direct expansion systems having a refrigerant network, it can be single split, multi split, variable refrigerant volume. Heat and cold generation are made by water boilers fed by fossil or natural fuels and possibly assisted by solar thermal plants. Water chillers fed with electricity or heat and possibly assisted by solar PV or thermal plants. 
air to water, air to air, water to water or water to air heat pumps, fed with electricity or heat, and possibly assisted by solar PV or solar thermal plants. They can also operate in reverse mode, providing cooling to the building. Direct expansion chillers or heat pumps for refrigerant expansion or compression. In case of all air or air water systems, we can include in the generation subsystem the air handling unit. Air handling unit manages a series of operations upon the air before it is distributed. Filtration, renovation, humidification and dehumidification, heating, cooling and heat recovery. To parcel these tasks, it requires to be fed by hot or cold water or alternatively by a refrigerant coming from the generation subsystem. Room terminals are voted to deliver the heat carrier to the ambient, to warm or cool it. When using water, they usually are fan coils or inductors for all water or air water systems, radiators for all water systems, radiant panels for all water or air water systems, for air distribution and extraction, we have air diffusers, grills and similar devices. They are utilized in all air or air water systems. Every system operates through a control system. Basically, it acquires and processes signals regarding temperature, humidity or other parameters, for instance, CO2 concentration coming from sensors displaced inside or outside the building and consequently activates or regulates the devices. For instance, on-off or power modulation of the generator, on-off or power modulation of pumps and fans, opening, closing or regulation of an air damper, on-off or water flow modulation of a humidifier in the air handling unit. They can be very simple and less efficient or very complex, more intelligent and efficient. The improvement of their hardware and software design is one of the ways to pursue energy efficiency. As you have seen, multiple combinations of components and schemes are available. Anyway, the right HVAC plant to serve a given space must fit several requirements. Providing the expected comfort according to the occupant's wishes and activity. Having installation and maintenance costs compatible with investors' and users' finances exploiting available energy sources in the best way, matching architecture design and overcome building constraints. These are the milestones to follow in every project. Mm -hmm.